Brian. He will be back tomorrow, so look out for that. Uh, we take a look over here, what I'm looking at on the screen. We're at TFNN.com. Strongly recommend checking it out if you haven't yet. When you're here, we got the homepage, right? We got some of our featured content. But if you come over here to the top, you can click on newsletters tabs. And let's look around here. We got a bunch to select from. But right now, I want you to focus on this one right here. This is the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Now, we have Basil on every Tuesday on the Tom O'Brien Show. It is always highly informative. He is on at 10 p. Excuse me, 10 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, listen, if, if you're trying to learn and really apply something, right, like you want to learn how to do this kind of analysis and place these trades, this is the newsletter and that is the show you want to watch. All first-time subscriber, subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if for whatever reason it doesn't work out for you, you're just too busy, go ahead. It is risk-free. And you also get access to his uh, archived webinars, which we actually have some that are relatively recent. So, Basil, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Jacob. How are you? I'm doing well, too. We're having a little bit of stormy weather today, but uh, that's actually kind of welcome. So, Stormy weather. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Basil, what are we looking so, at today? We got a lot of news. So, Yeah, we've got a lot of news, but the chart doesn't really care too much about the love news. It. Look at this. Yeah, we're looking at the daily Dow, and the objective in the Chapman Wave is always to get you from a buy signal at a low, and we alphabetize each higher peak, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but the fourth highest peak, peak D, is really the objective once the price gets upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode. Here's the monthly chart on the right. It's at a peak C. There should be a higher high in 2024, an all-time high to come for leg D. You've got a D in the weekly chart, and you've got only a B in the daily chart. And that implies that we should end the stochastics at 95%. That's fabulous. That's what you want. The on-balance volume is a little bit overboard. That's why we got that little pullback for a day and a half. And you've got the MACD strong in this gray line right here is the relative strength. That's actually holding very nicely. Most importantly, the nine period. The 9 over the 14 to me is really imperative to monitor. I, I, a chart I was trying to find for you last week when we spoke, I just discovered just a few moments ago, I said, oh, this is the chart that I was talking to you about. But I clicked and I hit the little minus button. So I lost it somewhere in the in the myriad of charts in the background. But this is the chart I wanted to talk about. And that was already last week. So that's one, two, three, four. That's when we were over there. Um, in the Dow. This is the Dow chart. I call it the Chapman Wave Dark News Index. One of the reasons that I use the Dow chart for that, one of the things I look at is there is always something overhanging the market that should take it down. But a lot of the time, the market just ignores it. And there are moments when the um, the weight of evidence of something that's perking out there is the market says, uh-oh, I don't like this. And right here in March, March the 20th of this year, this little rectangle that I drew in there, I said, uh-oh, we're getting a little bit of dark news. Uh, I call it originally dark, dark news cloud cover, but I've changed it to because there's an implication with a, with a candle called, the dark, uh, called the, uh, the dark cloud. But what we're looking at here is that's where there was very a lot of nervousness about um, the interest rates. And look how the market pulled back. Mm -hmm. So I have a technique that I, I worked on years and years ago where I look at, I, I think of the market... Uh, Big happenings occur with like an earthquake and then the aftershock. And how the markets react is really important. And all of these you can see. I've got IL for internal low, residual low. And then you get a big spike. Then you get the dark news cloud, cloud cover. Yeah, this is back in July of 2023. And each one of these is where there's enough nervousness to say we're going to go down. And then we've got an internal low and a residual low with that uh, um, low that was made October the 27th. And we ran up. And then I said, I haven't really, I'm putting this in here because it is, it's not, there, there isn't enough news to make it relevant, but it's just enough to go sideways. And this is where we went sideways from December the 15th. Then we ran up. Look, the green nine period moving average from November the 3rd was positive all the way through until I start to get that uh, 20 on the 20th of March. I said, uh oh, this is where we're going to there's a good chance we're going to pull back, and which is what we did. And then what the chart I wanted to find last week was to say, I think that we've made an internal low. That's the earthquake. And then the aftershock sometimes is stronger, sometimes weaker, 
But that's the aftershock. And I said, if that's the aftershock, I was going to say to you, if that's the aftershock, the buy signal that I've got, which is upgraded to a buy mode, should take the Dow to at least a leg D. And here we are, we're actually only in B. And that says this whole area going to the all-time high, it's still relevant right now. So I want to get out of this and say, uh, so we are still along the Dow. We've added to this position. We're anticipating using this left side, right side price time match technique that I discussed and I'll show in my webinars. Um, mm -hmm. It says that later in this week, first of all, we have to make a leg C, which will be over yesterday's high. And if that's done today, it extends leg B. The day's young. I was showing in the den that we had, look at this. I talk about peak Ds. Well, there it is. Yes, the five minute chart. Yes, your leg D in the five minute chart. And yes, your leg D in the 10 minute chart. So the, this is a relevant technique. Whether or not you're talking about a, a one minute or a five minute or, or a monthly chart or yearly chart, it doesn't matter. It's the same principle. Whoops, I, I typed in a, an E instead of a D. So this is live. This is exactly what we were looking at a, a few moments ago. We were waiting for this leg D. Now, a couple of things that I wanted to look at is over the last week, a week or so, I've been talking about the Russell small caps, how they've been lagging for oh, forever since the high was made back in November of 2021 at 244.46 IWM is the symbol. And then we've come down, we've made this pattern. I went through it this morning on my show. It's the, the this arch formation that eventually can become a cup if the price starts to close above the arch high. So we're starting to see that improving in the monthly chart. The, the weekly chart is acting very well, but it needs a little bit more to go to test the 211 uh, high that was made on the 28th. And here's the daily. So the data says we might take a little longer, but the 211.88 level will become a viable uh, target to the upside if we can break above. And this is another technique that I discussed. This little great green dashed line uh, is called the Chapman Wave in Inside Wedge Target Resistance Line. Dash green because it's going up, and that'll be the resistance that it needs to break. And it's right there at the resistance right now. So. Uh, we're actually long the IWM for the very first time. I can't even imagine how long. So that's important for us. And then looking at something like the XLF, which is really the XLF is the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. It's actually doing really well. So to me, it was really important that the XLF, the financials, move much higher from the lows that they were making just a month and a half ago. And they, they are doing that because I want to see the financials uh, showing that there's uh, that that particular sector is showing viability and and acting very well because mm -hmm. if it was failing here I'd be a little nervous so it is and we have a, a stock we have Bank of America we're still long from the uh, 31s it's at 38.58 and I like it because it's making new recovery highs it has a long way to go to the 50.11 high of February 2022 but coming back from the low of th uh, th uh, 25s just uh, back in October, that's really important. So there are a lot of positions that are actually starting to act very nicely right now. So I, at this particular point, I'm still looking for a D, at least in the Dow, and then we're going to have to start being careful. Fantastic. Basil, thank you as always. And, and seriously, guys, if you want to learn more, the webinars and the news that are opening call are perfect. We'll see you tomorrow at 10, Basil. Thank you very much. Thank you.